Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you for joining me for another furniture makeover tutorial. For this project I used a variety of tools including two Dixie Bell chip brushes, a mister, I used an applicator pad, a spatula, a sponge, plastic bowl and a spoon, some natural bristle brushes and some wood glue. For this project I used Manatee Grey Drop Cloth and Latte Chalk Mineral Paint. I also used Brown and Clear Wax Bronze Gilding Wax, Au Naturale and Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and Sea Spray. This piece was pretty plain to start off with but it was a great blank canvas so I thought I would go with something a little bit rustic. To begin with, after cleaning with white lightning and rinsing off my cleaner, I removed all my hardware. Now for the mix I used a cap of sea spray mixed with latte chalk mineral paint and I'm applying this with a chip brush. You don't want to use your good brushes for this because it can damage them. I'm just painting it on and dabbing it on. The key here is that I really want to create a lot of texture. This piece is going to have a lot of layers because I want it to look like it's been painted many many times over the years. So I'm dabbing this on quite sporadically because I'm going to be using another color as well. So we're going to keep that in mind. I'm just adding it randomly and I'm um, just making sure I've got a lot of texture. When you're mixing your sea spray, if it's a bit too thick, you can add a bit more paint. If it's not thick enough, just add a little bit more sea spray a little bit at a time. It's also best not to make up too much mixture because uh, it can dry out pretty quickly. I added this sea spray mixture over the entire piece but I did leave the top as I wanted to do a faux wood look on there. Next I made up a manatee grey mixture with sea spray, same consistency as the latte mixture. I'm applying it again with a chip brush and I'm just putting it in all the gaps where the latte sea spray mixture isn't. Having this second colour is really going to help give that illusion that it's been painted many times over the years and that the different layers of paint are starting to show through. It just gives it a little bit more of an authentic look. Next, once my sea spray had started to set up a little bit, I came in with a plastic spatula to blend and pull those different colors together. Now, you want to use a spatula that is a little bit flexible so that you don't get too many lines in your paint. It's going to really help again with that texture and it's going to look really great underneath the next layer of paint. You can see here I was having a little bit of trouble filling in some of the gaps so I came in with a little bit more paint and that really helped me start to blend the colors a bit better together. So again this is just going to be something that you have to experiment with and uh, it also depends on the weather as well. If it's a cool day you've got a little bit more work time, hot day it's going to start to set up on you a little bit. So I'm moving my spatula vertically and horizontally, changing angles and also changing pressure depending on how thick the paint is. Next I'm coming in with just a cloth, you can use a paper towel or anything really and I'm just creating a bit more texture. My paint is still wet so I'm able to move it around a little bit. When the first layers are dry, I'm coming in with drop cloth chalk mineral paint mixed with sea spray. Now I didn't make it as thick as the first layers. I really wanted this though to be thick enough to stay on. I'm applying it with a spatula like before and I'm running it over the top of the texture that I created. And as you can see, as I'm applying the paint with the spatula, it's not coming off in every section. And that is what helps create that chippy sort of a worn look. 
Um, again, this is going to be a layers situation. I am going to do one coat here and then when that's dry, I'm going to come back in with another coat just to fill it in a little bit. And how much you let show through is up to you. So as you can see, I am changing angles uh, depending on where I'm applying the paint and I'm also varying how heavily I'm pressing. I'm not pressing too heavy because I want that spatula to skip certain areas of the texture to give us that chippy look. And as I'm working around, when one area starts to set up a little bit, it's a good idea to go back over it and um, change directions. Again, you might be able to minimize some of those lines that appear in the paint doing this. Or later you could come in with a little bit of sandpaper. So you may have noticed that I did change which spatula I was using. Again, it was still just a plastic flexible spatula. Um, this one had a little bit more give in it. It was actually the spatula that came uh, with my spackle that I bought from our um, local hardware store. So I wasn't too worried about bending it or, or breaking it because it wasn't one of my good spatulas. But again, you, you're just going to have to play and see what works for you. I found this one um, just sort of went a bit nicer over the top of the texture. Next it was time to tackle the top. I used two coats of Latte Chalk Mineral Paint on the top, letting it dry in between each coat. Now some people might say, why didn't you just sand back the top? But you don't know exactly what kind of a wood grain you're going to get when you sand back pieces like this. So I decided that I would ensure that it was the exact look that I wanted by creating it with the wood grain tool. When those coats were dry, I came in with Dixie Belle's Eau Naturelle Voodoo Gel Stain. I'm just brushing it on in sections so that it doesn't dry too quickly because next I'm going to come in with the wood grain tool. The wood grain tool is pulled through the wet product. Now I tend to hold mine on a little bit of an angle and I hardly rock it at all. The more you rock it, the more you get wood knots and I tend to find that that gives more of an unrealistic look. So the next time I apply it, I am actually going to start at the opposite side from last time before dragging my wood grain tool through again. As you pull your wood grain tool through the product, you are going to get a bit of build up. So it's good to have a cloth or something there to clean it in between the drags. When the Voodoo Gel Stain was dry, I came in and then added some drop cloth to the top section there. This was a little bit messy, but I wasn't too worried. The Voodoo Gel Stain um, is actually quite easy to wipe back. Uh, where needed so I just had a wet cloth ready so you can see shortly that I do get a little bit messy and I do drop a little bit of drop cloth but I was able to come in and wipe that back really easily.
I decided to deepen the tone on top using Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain over the top of the All Naturel. I just came in with a damp sponge and applied it. Now I do apply two coats but I did let it dry in between. Next I decided to add some interest to the center. I had a woody bend that I had accidentally broken so I thought why not add it to the center. Before you apply woody bend you'll want to heat it up well with a hair dryer. This ensures that it is flexible and that it will mold well to your surface. Next I'm using a good quality wood glue and I'm making sure that I get it into all of the crevices covering the whole thing so that it adheres really really well. When the woody bend is in place, I am pressing down and I'm using a hairdryer to heat it up again. This is going to help with adhesion. You can see I had my little broken part here. I'm just adding a little bit more wood glue and putting it into position. I'll also heat that a little bit and press that down until it's stuck well. The next step was to tie it in with the piece itself. So I've come in with the Latte and Manatee uh, sea spray mixtures here. I'm just dabbing it on like before, getting that wonderful texture. I'm also adding the mixtures to the plain little pine handles that I added to the piece. Again, this is just to help it tie in. Once that textured layer was dry, I came in with drop cloth again. This time I did not add any more sea spray to the mixture. I'm using a stiff bristle brush to get into all the little nooks and crannies there and to add the paint uh, sporadically. Again, I still want some of that paint to show through so that it ties in with the rest of the piece. Finally, I'm coming in with another layer of drop cloth. Now this is not mixed with sea spray, I just put it over the top to get that coverage. And I'm also covering up a few of the areas that were showing through uh, just to tidy it up a little. I love the chippy look, um, but this is a piece I'm going to sell, so I tried to tone it down just a little bit.
Next I came in with some brown wax to antique the look a little bit. I'm focusing on the handles, on the little crevices and on the wood you bend in the centre. Um, I'm also noticing that as I'm applying it, the texture that was left behind by the sea spray and applying the paint with the spatula is catching that brown wax which is just giving it a really beautifully aged look. So I'm just picking certain areas and then buffing it a little bit with an applicator pad and um, just working my way around the piece. Bronze gilding wax is then added to the details on the woody bend and also the handles. The bronze gilding wax really brings out all the beautiful details in the woody bend and it's quite a subtle tone. To seal the top, I used Dixie Belle's Clear Bestang Wax and applied it with the La Petite brush. I'm using circular motions and working it into the chalk paint. And then I come in with an applicator pad and buff the wax into the surface. And here's the finished product. I hope that you like what I was able to achieve and that maybe you're inspired to try sea spray or painting with a spatula. I'd love it if you could hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments and you can head to our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au for all your painting needs. Thanks for watching.